I'm back, baby. Oh, wait a second. I never really left, did I? Well, I had work today, but that's a whole other issue. Again, I'd like to thank you for watching. Welcome again to the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling YouTube show. And my name is the one and only Hobo Tom. And my cat's all curled up. She looks so warm and fuzzy. Don't worry, folks. You'll see her again. Um, yeah, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about wrestling today. And more so SmackDown. But before we do that, I um, just want to spend just a couple of minutes. You know, this was kind of a very bad week. Or last week was a bad week for us. Because unfortunately... Larry Hennig passed away, and that is the father of Kurt Hennig, also known as Mr. Perfect, and the grandfather of Curtis Axel. So for Larry Hennig, I couldn't think of a good tribute, really. So, just a little picture. And again, um, thoughts and condolences do go to Curtis Axel. Be strong, young man. Oh, wait, is he young? Jeez, am I older than he is? Darn, I'm old. Wait a second, I remember watching my father wrestle. I probably am old. But enough about that. Let's talk about some SmackDown. First, at least. And this was a really good, weird show. SmackDown still is the much better show between SmackDown and Raw. Let's dive right into it. First of all, you have a match between Daniel Bryan and Mustafa Ali. I was shocked. This was an amazing match. I mean, if Daniel Bryan lost a little weight, he could be a cruiserweight. I mean, it's different. And in this case, different is really good. I mean, Daniel Bryan's the vicious heel. I like that in him. Corey Graves, I don't know what he's talking about, though, but I know, I think there was one line. Uh, Corey Graves said something about the evils of, of consumption. But I mean, the way Daniel Bryan would just kind of tear at the nose and face and... Just do all the vicious heel stuff. Not really wrestling holds, not submission holds. He just wanted a Mustafa Ali. And that's all it was. So uh, it was when Mustafa Ali did quicken the pace up. Oh, he was good. But again, you have the, the bigger, stronger Daniel Bryant. And again, after um, Mustafa Ali missed something, he he wrapped his, uh, well, Daniel Bryan went to the outside and took Mustafa Ali's leg and, of course, wrapped it around the ring post. And that was really the beginning of that. I think that happened right after a chop block. And then he went to the heel hook. Even though Mustafa Ali did get to the ropes on the yes lock, he could not break the heel hook. And Daniel O'Brien went over, and really a good, amazing, different match. So therefore, it's a surf and turf match. Then next, of the rap battle. Between the Usos and the Bar, moderated by the New Day. This was fun, and I'm going to give this a rating, even though I normally don't give segments a rating. Only because it harkened back to... to, to I hate to say it, but the music I used to listen to. And just to set the picture, the Usos look like the, the, the West Coast rappers. And they, they all look like they came out of the, the Uso Penitentiary. 
and then <laughs> the bar <laughs> looked like a white version of Run DMC. They were wearing red Adidas sweatsuits, both the tops and the bottoms, and they had the hats on. <laughs> Seamus cut out the top of the hat. Was, well, I should never point to the top of my head. But Seamus cut out the top of his hat so his mohawk, mohawk could come out. And he started to rap like vanilla ice. That was so good. So classic. I was just laughing. <laughs> yes, ice, ice, baby. Da -na -na -da 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 -na. This might be the last time you see the dancing hobo. Except for when I do the the hobo song next week and the 12 days of hoboing. Can't yeah, wait for that next week. Then of course the Usos were, were, were just kind of rapping like the way they normally do. Usos weren't as nostalgic, I guess. But it was fun. And then of course it's just broke out into a brawl. Because, of course, the, the bar just jumped the Usos, pushed him out. Then the Usos came back in, pushed the bar, the New Day, brawl, and soul, brawl ensues. The bar come out winning. This was fun. This, this was a cheeseburger moment. I mean, it was just fun. Then, oh, the other thing. The other thing is that the Usos did reference Matt Hardy. And delete! 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 Yes! Brother Nero! Mistress Chispa! The furriest cat. I can't use the finest cat. That was copyrighted by Stephen Larson. But I can definitely say the furriest cat. She's nice and furry. Has her winter coat coming in. And she's all curled up. Staring at me. Then the next match was Shane McMahon and The Miz versus Las Vegas Finest. And really this was just Shane beating up both guys. Um, the only notable thing, I think the one guy had like Bret Hart's logo, logo on his trunks. But it was a squash match. It was it was entertaining enough interaction between Shane and the Miz. I don't know, I just don't like watching Shane wrestle that much and it's not doing anything for the Miz. This is a can of soup. I don't know. If, that, that's the lo if that's the low point after all these weeks of watching SmackDown and knowing how so SmackDown has been so much better than Raw, I can live with it. Next, you have a Randy Orton promo on Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio, of course, they have their match for interest in tables, lounge, and chairs. And gee, there's a lot. Matches for TLC. TLC just seemed like a glorified SmackDown Raw combo, I think. TLC might be the worst pay-per-view yet. We'll see how that shapes up, though. And um, then Becky Lynch. Evil Becky. So good. Becky... The Hobo and Becky Lynch YouTube show. I could only hope. With a big smile on my face. Because, guess what, folks? That ain't happening. Would be nice if it happened. But probably not happening. The 
odds of that? I think the Kardashians giving me a boat when they see me leave my job for my break has a better chance of happening than Becky Lynch being in this chair over here. There will be a better chance of seeing my cat, though, eventually. Uh, then, then one time there was an Asuka promo. Asuka has to speak more Japanese. It just gives her that that quality, and she could be saying the nicest things to you, but whenever you say something in a loud foreign voice, it just sounds bad. This led to our next match, which is kind of like, again, another thrown together match. I have to back up a little bit more. Look at my spacing. You have Jeff Hardy and Rusev. Rusev has quite the beard going. He's, he's very dapper looking. Good for Rusev. Versus Samoa Joe and Shisuke Nakamura. And Shisuke Nakamura is all in all, all blue. He left his uh, leather, red leather pants and jacket. Now he's in like a blue kind of pleather jumpsuit. Hey, it is Las Vegas. He could have been trying to be the next Elvis out there. And again, this was a really fun match. Hardy is so good. Pairing him up with Rusev was a shot out of the dark. That was good. Again, being different, being original, you're going to definitely get style points. Samoa Joe and Shinsuke Nakamura, they're just so vicious. They're so good at just being the, the heel that beats up people. Rusev's, Rusev is the, is the strong. He's, he's a strong brute. Um, Jeff Hardy's obviously the high, high flyer. Um, Rusev eventually goes over with a machka kick to, to Shinsuke Nakamura. This was another fun match. It was, it was good. Not darn good, but really good. And if you're a really good match, it's like having a really good cheeseburger. And there was an AJ Styles promo. Oh, that's, that's good. Again, TLC just seems like it's going to be such a slog to watch. And then we get to the main event of the evening. You have Asuka versus Charlotte Flair. Asuka with her new mask. Her... Chinese style, or Chinese or Japanese style fan, and that black thong is good. Charlotte came out in an all white robe, and the color of the outfit she was wearing was not good because it was her skin tone and it looked like she was almost naked, naked Charlotte. Show, <laughs> she's gonna show everyone why she missed a month of, of SmackDown, just like in Becky Lynch's Instagram. And things I can say without a girlfriend present, so my cat really doesn't care. But this was a great match. The reason why it was a great match, Charlotte can have a great match with anyone. But this was the Asuka from NXT Asuka. She was vicious. She was a submission, a very technical based submission style. Trying to make, trying to break Charlotte. Again, between her submissions and the strikes. And she's smart. She learned from the last time that she faced her. Whenever Charlotte would go up top, she'd always bring her knees up. Trying to block that moonsault. So it means she's learning. Charlotte's just a, a great wrestler. And kind of a great match against 70% of the populace out there and probably 90% of all other female wrestlers and all other women wrestlers. 
But yeah, it was just a very good technical match. Um, Charlotte did try to go for the figure eight or the more traditional figure four a few times. Asuka did try to reverse the pressure. But then she um, uh, got caught in, got went for the figure eight again, but Asuka tried to small package her for a pin. Asuka went for the Asuka lock a few times. And I think the third time she went for it, both women went outside the ring, and Charlotte picked up a kendo stick. Who knew kendo sticks were so prevalent under wrestling rings? I'll have to take a look next time I'm in an NXT event, or even a Go Wrestle event. I should go to next year, for sure. Been meaning to do that. But she takes a kendo stick. And you know what that means? That means the death finish comes out, baby. Nobody wins. But this is the WWE. Uh, somebody has to win. We have Oscar winning by DQ. Because it was a death to finish, baby. And then Charlotte went to task with Becky Lynch. And so I beat her with a kendo stick. But only hit her in the belt. Kendo stick's not going to hurt the belt. So then Becky jumped Charlotte because Be for the whole time Becky was on commentary, she was just kind of sitting there with the belt saying, Yeah, yep, this is, I'm enjoying this. Let these two beat each other up. And then eventually Asuka on that Kendo stick. She went to town on Charlotte pretty good. And on Becky a little, and on Becky really good too. She beat up Becky Lynch with that kendo stick and took that kendo stick to Charlotte Flair's back. Woo! Gonna have some sore spots tomorrow, I know that much. And that was SmackDown, and again, and well, this match, even though with a death if finish, baby, somebody did win. It advanced to the storyline. And therefore, it's gonna get a tough and tough rating, baby. So that was SmackDown. And again, it mine looks like the one one or two segments of a really solid, fun show. Let's take a little break and talk about some mixed match challenge next. So with the mixed match challenge, this was actually kind of the low point of the whole Mix Max Challenge thing, because it was okay. Um, starts off, again, you have the interview backstage with R-Truth and Carmella. I think Carmella's getting a little worn out with the fabulous thing. And it's just like when Bobby Roode, probably a few weeks ago, or about a month ago, you could tell he was getting sick of, of being glorious. I think Carmilla's tiring of this whole fabulous skin. It's just kind of her voice a little bit. And again, a little bit in her inflection. And she doesn't have that, that oomph. Oh, also... I'd like to send a shout out to Big Cass, and I hope everything is well, and hope the best for for, for you, Big Cass or Colin Cassidy. And he suffered like a seizure or something before his match, so Ugh. very good. So Big Cass, this picture goes out for you. Get well soon. So we start the match off with, with uh, Bailey and Apollo Crews versus Alicia Fox and Jenner Mahal. Fox has way too much energy. You know, she has to have like a whole package of Smarties or something before her matches. She's just bouncing around. She has lungs that 
I can't believe you can hear her. And I think they have that live mic really set up close to the ring. Or down, she darn, she's really loud. And I will find out firsthand on January 7th when the hobo goes to Raw. Again, I'll post that stuff probably, yeah, Monday night, I guess. Yeah, Monday night, when I get back from Raw, I'll start to post stuff. Worst comes to worst is up Tuesday, or it's up Tuesday morning. But it was good. Uh, um, Cruz and Mahal start off a typical wrestling match. Um, again, Cruz is smart. He knows he hasn't been doing the mixed match challenge as long. So at least he's trying to get the quick pin attempts and just went pin attempt, pin attempt, pin attempt. And that was pretty good. Um, when he got down to a wrestling match, Jinder Mahal actually began to overpower Cruz a little bit. Although Cruz still has amazing athleticism. Don't don't ever get me wrong. But and then there was a tag, so Bailey and Fox is there. Again, Bailey goes for the quick pin after quick pin after quick pin after quick pin. And you wanted that quick victory. Fox is just yelling. Constantly and he, at the Sting Brothers, at Jinder Mahal. I mean, uh Gender um eventually she tags out. And uh, Jinder Mahal again. He's more of the brawler. Again, Cruz is more of the more of the true athlete, more, more the more athletic of the two. I don't want to say Jinder's not athletic, but he's not doing no standing backflips. Um, and then Fox was just on the outside. I don't want to know how much sugar she had. Did she go to like some sugar buffet in Las Vegas? She was wiggling her hips. Doing can can kicks. She was doing things Corey Graves didn't even know about, and, and poor Renee is like, oh well, she's just keeping warm, she's keeping limber. No, she's not. She's doing like wide leg squats. On the ringside, it's like, whoa! What sugary drink? Did, what sugary concussion did she have? Because I need a triple of it. And I have my own little sugary concoction. My little meal and, and some water. But I have nowhere near the energy. Of course, it's about almost 3 in the morning. I should be getting to sleep soon once I start the editing process. And it just seems, I don't know, they always have the hot tag, and I guess it's just ingrained to them. But why? The hot tag is to get the fresh person to get the fresh person in, but both people are fresh because once a woman tags out, the other woman, the other well tags her male partner, the other guy has to come in anyway, so you can't really isolate them. It doesn't make much sense. I mean, I know it's the WWE way of thinking; you always have the hot tag, but if the other person is going to come in anyway. Why? <laughs> eventually, Sting eventually pulls out Alicia Fox. One Sting eats a belly, the belly to belly. The other Sting eats a belly to belly. Gender, um, Cruz takes out Jinder Mahal on the outside. However, Alicia Fox just kicks Bailey in the head and picks up the one, two, three for the win. Fox and Mahal go on to the finals and TLC. And I'm sure everyone can see my enthusiasm. But overall, this, this match was fun, though. I, I, won't, I won't knock it yet. But this was a good, again, cheeseburger. It was a fun match. It was a, it was a good cheeseburger match. Then we're going to throw a second match. Asuka and The Miz takes on R-Truth and Carmella. I don't know what it is. I just don't like the comment. I I think I'm just getting tired of the combination of R-Truth and Carmella. The dance breaks are okay. Um, Asuka just looks amazing. 
Miz is just yelling at Asuka. Potentially Asuka. Oh, wait, that's a spoiler. Asuka again, that black thong on. So good as Asuka. Miz is just like, you're weak. And then they did a yay boo to figure out who'd start the match. First, whenever Asuka would share it, to raise her hand, yay! Miz would raise his hand. Miz, Miz would raise his hand. Boo! And of course, that infuriates the Miz to, to, to know to the nth degree. So this is good. Um, the match starts off pretty good. Um, <laughs> Asuka and Carmella start off the match. Miz just jaws at Asuka. She she smacks him in the ta in the chest. That's the tag. <laughs> she looks so confused. So he got in the ring. Um, our our truth and the Miz can can really put on a good technical wrestling match. I mean, there was nothing really bad about it. It's it's just I don't know. It was really quick. Um, our truth still does that amazing Rick Rick James drop. There's a split drop, or I could do that, but it wouldn't look as pretty as he does it. Again, they have the dance break. It's okay. Oh, and Renee Young, I, I forgot to mention this, but Renee Young has, had on a Four Horsemen shirt underneath like, her white jacket. I don't know if she had that. I don't think she had that on. No, she had something else on on Raw. Maybe she just didn't have any other clothes packed or Dean Ambrose, like, took it all or something. He is a lunatic. You don't know what lunatics do in the back alleys of Las Vegas. Last time they were in Las Vegas, I think he wore, like, a big foam cowboy hat. It was kind of goofy. But um, eventually they do coax Ahaska into dancing. And so, and, so, and so Asuka was 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 doing doing her little shimmy on ringside. Of course, Miz is going to yell out, "No, you can't do that!" <laughs> Tell you what, Miz is is a really good systematic wrestler, though. Very good. Um, I, when Asuka got back in the ring, she hits that modified GTS. And eventually, um, Carmella did make the tag and. Initially, is kicked out of the because it would have been our truth and Carmella. And TLC with actually real stakes. Do you really think our truth is going to be the thirtieth person into the male Royal Rumble? I don't know. Now, Emil, of course, heals it up because. Carmella went to give Miz a super kick, and he just threw Oscar right in the way. Oscar's like, no, she starts stealing at him, and the crowd got involved. Oscar's gonna kill you. Oscar's gonna kill you. And the Miz is like, no, no, he's almost in the yellow. No, 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 break, break, break. Gotta sell the best. Um, eventually, our truth does do the scissor kick on the Miz, pins the Miz, and our truth and Carmella going to TLC again. Look at this face. Right here. You can see happy expression. And that sets up TLC. And TLC is going to be just a glorified TV show, I think. Thankfully, I don't have to pay for it. I have my other means to learn about it, which I should not mention on YouTube because that would probably get me another suspension. And I only have... <laughs> oh, no. 20 more days for my suspension to be lifted. 
I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, there is that open casting call, ladies. You could again in this chair next to the hobo. Um, so again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um, again, just some programming notes. On Thursday, probably Thursday night, I'll make my prediction videos. I don't know, we might see a return of Dr. Tom. Yeah. Dr. Tom might come back for a quick little visit to make his predictions. Just WWE mathematics. And the, and the algorithm. On Friday, I'm going to see if I can really make a effort to catch the Ring of Honor supercard or whatever their pay-per-view is called. That comes on at 8. Sunday, I'm going to give my last recap and review because then after that, everything else is going to be gravy because I'll be back live streaming. So I'll live stream my reactions because this will just be kind of a recap and review. Not, not my RR and R show. This will just be an R and R show recap and review. Versus reactions, recap, and review. And then next week, going to, of course, probably have me singing the hobo song and the 12 days of hoboing in preparation for Christmas. Christmas week, I don't think there's any. Oh, there's also Thursday next. So it'll be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Because Thursday is the tribute to the troops. Christmas week, I don't think they're doing anything. I think they're having like a best of. But I will be doing my own personal show. The D-B-B-F-L-W. Yes, Daytona Beach Bum Fight, Bum Fight League Wrestling. Daytona Beach Bum Fight Wrestling. I don't know, I have to think of something better for that. And then New Year's... Eve, my suspension is lifted, and I'll also have New Year's Eve bash. I'm going to look into see, to see if I do something for Wrestle Kingdom 13. Not a greatest card as it's been in the past, but we'll see. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I shall see everyone Thursday.